Welcome back to Flipping Clean Mama. My name's Larissa and I am a stay-at-home homeschooling mom who loves to transform vintage furniture on the side. Join me today as I transform this vintage little cabinet. See how it turns out? See what the numbers were at the end and find out what the person that bought this cabinet is going to use it for now. All right, without further ado, let's get flipping. let's get started so as always I am removing the hardware um, just with a screwdriver just removing that hardware and putting it all in one place so I don't lose it I did reuse this hardware as well just spray painted it So here I'm cleaning the piece again with the Sunnyside TSP substitute that we just get at our local Menards here in the Midwest. Again, you can use any kind of degreaser or TSP or TSP substitute. It's just important that you clean your pieces and then also rinse them really good as well so your paint will have something to adhere to. As you can see, there's my little helper. That's my my DeWalt sander and I am sanding down with an 80 grit sandpaper the inside of these doors down to the bare wood and then I also sand down the top with an 80 grit to the bare wood and then the shelves inside of the cabinet as well to the bare wood so I can stain them And as always, it is important to wear that mask when you sand. You want to protect those lungs. This piece sanded really good. like this. I usually start with an 80 and then work myself up like 120, 180, and then a 220 to make it all nice and smooth and make sure there's no circular 
lights going on from the sander. the drawer as well. The top drawer of this cabinet was a really narrow and skinny drawer and then the other drawer was more of a regular size drawer. And there you see me sanding the inside down as well to the bare wood and then I also did the shelf there. Alright, here I am putting on your uh, pre-treater for the stain, your pre-stain. I'm just applying it with a foam brush. I either usually use a foam brush or just a lint-free cloth to apply the pre-stain and the stain. You put on the pre-stain and then you let it sit about 15 minutes and then you put the stain on. I'm just using mid min waxes pre-stain here. And I've pre-stained all the wood areas, of course, that I just got done sanding. And there's one of the doors. going to stain this cabinet with Minwax's dark walnut today on all the wood areas. And I'm again, I'm just using a lint-free cloth and rubbing it on. Okay, so the foot of this cabinet had a big gouge in it, so I'm using quick wood, wood epoxy, um, to fill it. And this was my first time back in the beginning of the summer to use it. To take the quick wood, you just sort of like silly putty in your hand and you mix it together in your fingers until it turns all one color. And then you mold it into the spot that you want it to go. And so that's what I'm doing here with this leg. Um, I did learn from this not to use quite so much. I used a little too much on this and it was really hard to sand it down as smooth as I wanted to. There was a little ridge there still. 
But all in all, it did work really good. And for my first time trying it back then, it went pretty good. So I would totally recommend Quickwood if you have a big hole or gouge. It does dry just as hard as wood does. And then you can sand it down nicely. Now I'm just going to start priming. I'm using my Ben Zinser Schlack Base Primer, which I use all the time now. But this was the first time back then in the summer that I used this primer. And I learned quite quickly that I needed to use a roller with it. So after this side, I did go to the hardware store and got me a roller. And it worked so much better with the roller. All right, I'll just let you watch as I prime. Dixiebel's Silk Mineral Paint in Nautical and it is an all-in-one paint so it does have the primer and top coat all included in it. Um, I decided to t prime the piece anyways just in case but you would not have to prime especially with this dark color and being an all-in-one paint. But when in doubt, prime it out, right? <laughs> I'm using my zebra brush. Always a big fan of my zebra brushes. I believe this one's the two inch zebra brush. Ended up doing two coats of the paint on this piece. And it is a self leveling paint and it really levels out well and dries well. I'm a big fan of the Dixie Bell silk paint especially. I actually use the same color paint on my own personal bedroom set and so I know how well it holds up. Here I'm just lightly sanding it after it dries and then I'll be doing another coat. So I'll let you watch that to a little music.
All right, here's the finished door. And then I had my husband help put on the doors. Just a side note for you guys. Um, I didn't get this part of the flip videoed, but I did keep the original hardware. I spray painted them with Rust-Oleum's gold and then top coated them and had my husband actually help me adjust the hinges and everything as you saw in that picture there. And then I did top coat the wooden parts with uh, Minwax's poly acrylic. And so that wasn't on the camera either. At the base of the dresser, the, the blue part, it was not in need of top coat because of the Dixie Belle silk paint. And I didn't think it'd be like a uh, very constantly used piece. So I didn't put an extra layer of top coat on that. So just the wood parts. All right. I hope you guys are ready to see the finished product. Here it comes. And then stay tuned for the numbers at the end. on Facebook Marketplace for $50. I put in about $15 of paint, $5 of top coat, $5 of stain. Gives me an all-in price of $75. I ended up listing this on Facebook Marketplace for $225. Well, once you know it, the summer was super slow here in the Midwest. Not just for me, but for my other furniture flipping friends as well. So I ended up dropping it by $25 increments over the next three months. And when I had it down to $175, I got an offer from a gentleman for $125. So I took it and he came to pick it up. And I was very interested to learn that he wanted to use it for a record cabinet. Which is such a cool idea, I thought. He did want to take that shelf out that was on the bottom there and put his records down there and of course the record player on the top. So I'm very happy that it's going to go to a good home and have a good use and even more happy that it's going to stay out of the landfill and it's not in my garage anymore. And the $50 that I made on profit isn't ideal but I still consider it a win-win. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you'll like, subscribe, and comment on my video. I am so blessed to have each and every one along, along on my journey with me. <laughs> and I just hope you have a really great week. All right. Keep on flipping, everyone.